So here it is, my complete all-around opinion of the new Star Wars movie. Uh, it's been out for a while now. Uh, in fact, it might not even be in theaters anymore once this review comes out, but that's just how I do things now, apparently. Uh, also, I felt, especially this movie, it required a bit more thought. I wanted to, I wanted to really think about what I have to say about this movie uh, before I decided to put it on camera. Um, so, here it is. Star Wars The Force Awakens is a movie about saving people from a giant spaceship and securing information in a droid. Uh, not to be confused with A New Hope, which is a movie about saving people from giant spaceships and securing information in a droid. Uh, and that, I mean, really, that's kind of all around what this entire movie is. It's The whole thing is this huge nudge, you know, hey, remember remember in Star Wars when this happened? Well, here's, here's something similar, you know? I, it's hard to say how I feel about that. There's just no, there's nothing new about this movie. And that's, I think my biggest problem with it is, again, it's all just, just references to the original. Uh, the trash compactor, uh, someone stranded on a desert planet wanting to see the world and explore. Um, a rescue mission involving wearing a stormtrooper outfit and taking the helmet off. Um, the Death Star. <laughs> There's another Death Star. And it's it blows my mind that no one cried foul <laughs> about that, you know? Yeah, it's not called the Death Star. It's the fucking Death Star, okay? Same premise. <laughs> um, again, story and important intel in a droid um, hiding in the Falcon's floor vents. I just, all this kind of stuff. And it, it's, it almost feels like it's not a new Star Wars movie. It is, though. And again, I don't hate it for that. Uh, but it just felt like it was too much. You know, again, just didn't have its own, own little twists to it. There are some. And speaking of, I should probably get this out of the way too. This I'm, I'm opening the floodgates for the spoilers here because I feel like this movie can't really be discussed properly without going full spectrum, talking about all of it in, in its entirety. Um, so, again, it was all just a bunch of references uh, to the other Star Wars movies. There are some new things, uh, like the characters. Not all the characters, but some of the characters are completely different. Um, you have Rey, played by Daisy Ridley. Uh, you have Finn, played by John Boyega. Uh, Poe Dameron, played by Oscar Isaac. Uh, and I think as far as main characters go, uh, one thing that confused the hell out of me, though, is uh, Lor Santeca. He shows up in the very beginning of the movie, and he's introduced as a friend, an old friend of Princess Leia, or Senator General Leia. Uh, she's she's uh, billed on uh, IMDb as Princess Leia, so whatever. Um, but yeah, I have no idea who this guy's supposed to be, if we're supposed to know him, or if he's just some throwaway character to get the plot moving. I didn't know. Oh, you also have Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. Um, now, another thing that bugged me about this movie was the humor. Uh, it, basically, this movie was just filled to the brim with what I like to call prequel humor. It just completely pandering to kids kind of humor. And I didn't, like... I, it, again, blows my mind that people are, you know, hate on the prequels so much, love this movie so much, but it's, again, like, the same, this grown reaction you get from the prequels. There's a lot of that in this movie. Um, just a lot of slapstick characters, a lot of moments where it's like, well, that's completely out of nowhere and didn't have to be in there, but apparently here's some stupid joke to be thrown in there. And that's not to say that Star Wars can't have humor. Again, New Hope had, you know, character interactions. I mean, the originals had all these different character interactions, which were hilarious. Han and anybody was a fun reaction. Han in this movie is, you know, 
his interactions with people are funny. How the characters interact with each other is funny. And also well written. I liked the new characters as well and, you know, kind of how they mixed with each other and even with some of the old characters. Um, but yeah, just a lot of just unnecessary humor uh, thrown in left and right. Again, not saying Star Wars can't have it, just it was prequel humor. Also, not that I would really damn a movie for it, um, but this had a lot of plot holes, I noticed. Um, well, at least one I noticed. Um, happens when uh, Poe Dameron and Finn, they're in a TIE fighter. They crash on the planet Jakku uh, because uh, Poe's looking for his droid. The, the soccer ball thing because he has important information okay so they're in a TIE fighter it crashes Finn you see the perspective of Finn getting out of the crash looking for Poe he can't find him only finds his jacket assumes he's dead carries on well later you find out obviously Poe's still alive only this time he's on an X-wing fighting the the First Order, you know, the, the, the Empire, basically, in this movie, on a completely different planet. Now, what I don't understand is, and then when they meet back up, he's like, oh, I was, I was thrown from the crash, and you were gone and everything. So you went back to the Rebel base and just decided to leave your droid behind? Like... What? <laughs> I, I thought that was really, like, I, I don't know, maybe it's just the whole film school bullcrap ruining films for me forever, but I just, I couldn't help but stop and think that doesn't make any sense. Why didn't you keep looking for your droid? <laughs> Why did you go back? Who brought you back to the rebel base on a completely different planet from where you were? Like, the hell? <laughs> so, again, it's a nitpick. Um, didn't really destroy it, the movie, for me. It's just, it was hard to, to, to not, um, it was, it was, yeah, it was hard not to gloss over. Uh, also, I don't understand why people made such a big deal promoting this film over the practical effects. Because there's just as much CG <laughs> as, again, the prequels. Maybe not as much. You know, again, like, I, the whole big deal they made was basically the first planet they're on has a lot of puppetry and people in costumes. Simon Pegg actually plays, like, some insignificant character in a creature costume. Okay, that's cool. Uh, what about, um, the hell's her name? Maz. Maz Kanata. Like, a CG creature. Like, that... Uh, what about uh, whatever they call it when they f meet Han and Chewie on their little barge and these aliens, these creatures start eating all the people who are after Han. What do you call That wasn't practical effects. <laughs> you know, it's like, why did they make such a big deal out of it? Again, I hate it because it's such a fuck you to Lucas, it feels like. You know, it's like, oh, you ruined Star Wars by putting CG in movies, in all your movies and stuff, and here's our new movie, and it has just as much of it. I don't know. I mean, getting back into this whole, like, just references to the old movies, like, watch the the next movie, the, the sequel to this movie, have some sort of kick-ass no-name bounty hunter in a mask who doesn't say anything. <laughs> you know, that's basically, you know, it's so predictable that they're going to have a character like that now in the next movie, because, again, that's just... That's just how predictable all of this is. Um, but one thing that was predictable, but appreciated, was John Williams' score. Uh, he is back for this, and, you know, did the same music. I don't even know if you had to, do you have to, like, rescore that stuff, because it's already there. But, um, like, you know, the main theme. But he also wrote some new songs, and they're pretty good. Um... Yeah, that's, that's my story. I need to bring up music a lot more in this. A lot of movies um, I brought up, I've done reviews on, like, horns, I think. I wanted to say something about the music, but I ended up not. Um, 
so yeah, there's the music. John Williams came back for this. Did a good, good job. Um, that actually reminds me of another thing. Uh, and this isn't a nitpick, this doesn't have anything to do with my enjoyment of the movie. But how does the government work in this movie? Um, because you have the First Order, is it? I think it's called the First Order. Um, which is basically the Empire. They have Stormtroopers, they have uh, Star Destroyers, they have the Star Killer, also known as a bigger Death Star. <laughs> um, and then you have um, the Resistance, that's what they're called, the Resistance, which is basically the Rebels. They fly X-Wings, and Leia is kind of heading the whole thing off. Same thing. Uh, so how does that work, though? Because we left off Episode 6 with the Rebellion crushing the Empire. So who's the First Order? Why are they so against the Republic? Um, in fact, I'm pretty sure in the movie it shows them destroying Coruscant. I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be Coruscant that you see them blow up. Who are these guys? And if they're the new threat, it, you know, I, I kind of went into this movie assuming the First Order was just the Empire's resurgence, you know, them trying to hold on to what the Empire was, even though the Rebels all but wiped them out. But that can't be right, because then who's the Resistance? Like, why is there a Resistance? Why isn't there an official army of the Republic at this point? You know, was the first hand the official army? Like, just using the whole stormtrooper, stormtroopers and spaceships and stuff as their army, but then they became evil, and then the resistance... Like, I, I don't understand how that works, especially in Leia's position, because she's a general, you know, head honcho of the Rebel Alliance. They crush the Empire, but then next thing you know, she's leading a resistance against something very similar to the Empire. So what happened in this, you know, couple year span of the Republic winning? Like, did they win? Like, what happened in between? It didn't seem to be very clear, um, and confuses the hell out of me when I try to think about it. But uh, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. But yeah, that's basically uh, it. Um, I kind of talked more about the bad, but I can't emphasize enough how interesting the whole relationship is, especially between Finn, Rey, and uh, Kylo Ren. Um, just really fascinating dynamic between the three of them. Um, and really, that's the only original thing out of this movie, but it, they did a good job with it, I felt. Um, and I was glad uh, people have voiced concerns about, you know, what <laughs> how would you mix the new characters with the old, you know, or is Han Solo just going to be a cameo, you know, or is the story going to revolve more around him? And I felt did a pretty good job mixing. Um, you know, of course, you have the extended universe, which, to my understanding, I haven't read a lot of the extended universe books, you know, learning a lot about the whole after um, uh, Return of the Jedi type stuff, but... To my understanding, this movie kind of shits on it <laughs> and completely changes everything. Um, but they do keep uh, Ben, or Kylo Ren, as uh, Han and Leia's um, son, but they had like two other kids. And then Luke um, and Mara Jade, who apparently is a completely missed opportunity character here. Hello, redhead, Sith turned light Jedi, who has kids with Mark Hamill, I mean, Luke Skywalker, whichever, same thing, basically. <laughs> um, like, they have kids, too. So it's like, and then, yeah, there's this whole, like, it kind of makes it obvious that Rey is Luke's kid. Um, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of the, th I'm pretty sure everybody walked out assuming that this was what was going on, and they're just kind of, you know, teasing us with this, you know, no re official reveal. Um, 
But again, you have the, the second installation of the trilogy, <laughs> so it's going to reveal some huge plot twist to a uh, relationship or, you know, a, a, a relative um, that the main character has. Again, uh, I turn you back to uh, Empire Strikes Back. Luke learns who his father is. So they're probably going to do the same thing with Rey in the next movie. Be like, oh, well, actually, Luke is your brother. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. It, it, they made it seem really obvious, though, so it wouldn't be that big of a surprise. Um, though, again, I, I can't emphasize this enough. Look for that Boba Fett character, not Boba Fett character, in the next movie. He'll be there. Um, again, it's super predictable, unless they have different writers, and the next one's actually going to try something new and not be afraid to, uh, you know, give us something different. And it's so much, I don't know, it's so much pandering to to the fans, you know, it's like, we're going to throw a bitch fit if you don't make every five minutes remind us of something in the original, <laughs> you know? I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it was intentional, but yeah, it's clearly just a, just, just a way to, to stroke our dicks, our, our fan dicks. Um, so we'll enjoy it more, basically. Uh, that was their, that was their fallback, obviously. It's like, oh, we're making a new Star Wars movie, but at least it's nothing but references to the movies everybody loves, right? So, it didn't seem to work out as well for, uh, the new Jurassic Park movie, that's basically all that movie was too, is references to the original. I enjoyed it, but everybody else seemed to not like it. And then this one, I seem to hate for what it is, or what it was trying to do, but again, everybody seems to fall in love with it. I mean, it could be episode one all over again, where it takes us a couple weeks to stop and realize, oh wait, not the greatest movie ever. Hmm. But, um, I liked it though, I'm not saying I hated it um, I liked I liked what it added to it <clears throat> um, and I like it's a new Star Wars movie you know I can't I can't complain <laughs> for a new Star Wars movie and I think that's kind of what this is boiled down to for everybody who likes it is it's a new Star Wars movie why hate it you know and I f feel like when I first saw episode one I was a kid I saw it like 10 times in theaters. I loved it. You know why? Because it was a new Star Wars movie. And that's fucking awesome. You know? So, ah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's this weird love-hate thing nowadays. And, uh, it sucks, because I shouldn't just enjoy it. You know, I wish I could shut off my, my brain and just be like, a oh, Star Wars movie, oh. You know, but, um, no, I can't help but look at things critically nowadays, uh, unfortunately. Oh, <laughs> that's the other thing. Um, apparently, Admiral Ackbar is in this movie. Yeah, uh, part of the resistance involves Leia, who is a rebel, you know. Admiral Ackbar, for some reason, is part of the resistance. And then uh, Lando's co-pilot in Return of the Jedi, the the vagina mouth dude. Apparently, th there's one of his kind in the movie, and to my understanding, from what I heard, it's supposed to be the same guy. Um, again, pandering to fans, being like, oh, it's Admiral Ackbar. There's no other Calamarians in the entire galaxy, and if you ever see one, it's, it's Admiral Ackbar. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's... Neither here nor there. Star Wars The Force Awakens. Awakens. Unwakens. Um, I actually put myself in a sticky situation here because um, we gave the new Jurassic Park movie a 4 out of 5. At least I think we did. Even though it was basically the same thing this movie is. is a rehash of a classic and constantly being like, oh hey, remember this good movie, they're gonna just keep throwing reminders at, at you. But at least in Jurassic World's case, it made sense, you know, because it was a new park. So of course it would rehash it. You know, of course there'd be callbacks. You know, it's the same island, so why not have them come across the old 
uh, area that the original movie took place in. You know, it all kind of fits in as it's its own little universe. But all that said and done, I give Star Wars The Force Awakens three and a half out of five Warwick Davis cameos. Yeah, I missed it the two times I've seen it, but yeah, he was there somewhere. <laughs> Good for him. He needs more work. Ah, Star Wars, nothing but Star Wars.